wiring is so time consuming what's up guys uh welcome back uh shocker we're working on wiring i know um i've been at it for probably five hours six hours today and off and on throughout the week uh and well i feel like i've done a lot yet there's still a lot to do to uh to get the wiring sorted out on this thing uh that harness that i got i'm actually still not disappointed with it so far it's worked out pretty well but i went uh, a step above on my stuff and got some deutsch connectors um these things are awesome i will say that much and i got a, a generic kit and then I paired that. Oh, don't mind, I'm crawling in. I still gotta do the radiator stuff. Um, you wanna come around this way so we can see it. Uh, but I, so I got a generic kit which gives me connectors, you know, like this, which are being used in multiple places. This here. I went down and you went up. Well, yeah, I was grabbing it so I could, you know. Anyway, um, this is a six pin and this has got all my lights for the front end and also the horn worked in it. And this will, this bundle, this plug will come right through here and connect with a plug that's right down here, right there. like that and that'll have all my lights and obviously i still need to put a grommet on right there protect those and that bundle is still going to get loomed once it gets sorted out there's a i gotta figure out exactly how i'm going to do all that but once you have that set up and then i've got everything routed and it's kind of hard to see because uh i spent a lot of time trying to make it uh disappear um so this this harness here that comes up comes over to this bulkhead connector, which I had to get separate. And that bulkhead is the A bulkhead. And then I have my B bulkhead, which goes, as you can see, goes this way down under the brake master cylinder back behind the engine. And the, the A bulkhead has, like I said, it's got all the lights and stuff in the front, but it also has, this is an eight pin bulkhead connector and it's got my fan control in there as well as my uh, excite wire for the alternator and my charge wire for the alternator is actually hidden within this same harness which will come up and then that's this wire right here this is actually my charge wire and that drops down onto a post um you want to grab one of those they're right there on the table underneath right there next to the meter to the left of the meter right there yeah okay um no that's relays they're open there in a bag they're right there somewhere though yeah those so that post is not actually just a power distribution it looks like this and this is the side that we're seeing right here on the outside that goes through the firewall and on the other side of the firewall is this spin on nut that's going to be up by the fuse block giving me clean 12 volt power on the inside of the car um, and i went ahead and i did this for both the 12 volt and i did it for the ground so i've got a clean ground on the inside and a clean ground to the outside this ground is run to the top of the motor here and to the body right here so that I have a, a motor ground and a body ground clean into the engine bay. And then my block is also going to be ground to the battery and to the chassis. Uh, the other thing I added, I went a little overkill on ground, so I've got a block to chassis, block to battery, block to ground post here, ground post to the body, and then I added another ground 
down here off the side of my alternator to the chassis. So, so many grounds. Just in the engine bay, that's one, two, three, four, five different ground points in the engine bay. Um, I didn't want to have ground issues. So I put a lot of ground points in. Um, and when I do this front light section, this will all have local grounds as well. So there'll be grounds all over the place. Every, all the different circuits will be uh, very well grounded. Uh, and then the, the harness that's back here, it, it comes down, it's all loomed in black split sleeve, which is this stuff. And what, the reason it's split sleeve is because you can open it. Um, I prefer split sleeve. I find it easier to work with than the closed stuff. And I hate the plastic stuff. I mean, uh, oh goodness. Um, this, this, this crappy plastic stuff. Um, don't, don't use this crap in your car. It's cheap. And when you first put it on, it doesn't look terrible, but after you, it heat cycles and starts to age, it starts to crumble and come apart and just looks like crap. Um, don't use that stuff in your car. It's just, it's yuck. Uh, get a, uh, a proper loom material. It's not much more expensive. You can get it in split sleeve or closed if you want to do uh, just straight slip through. It's good stuff. But uh, so yeah, I loomed everything back there and that has my ignition. That has a, a 12 volt, a main 12 volt feed that passes behind the motor and picks up at the starter, which is then connected to the main battery cable, which I still have to do finish routing on that, but I'm not gonna do that until the rest of the harness is done because I actually wanna tidy those up with them connected to the battery so that I get good proper lengths and get those secured. So both my main ground for the battery and for uh, main power off the battery are still pending being finalized. Uh, and, and that's it. it, it tucks everything away nice and neat. I did choose to go with a later style HEI that's got the coil in the cap this cleans up the wiring because I don't have to have the, I don't have to find a place to mount an external coil, which I, I like the style, the look of the smaller cap as far as being old school, but then you have to find, then you have to mount a coil somewhere and route another plug wire. I think this coil is leaking actually. So this coil is probably no good now. Yeah, it looks to be leaking. Anyway, um, that's not ideal. Whatever. It is what it is. So there's that. Um, the, you'll notice that I've got two different temp sensors or temp sending units. One of them, which is this one here that's on the green wire, this actually goes to my gauge inside. This one here is gonna go to a relay that's up here on the front that will trigger the fans thermally. Um, I don't remember what the trigger temperature is. Oh well, I think that's over here somewhere. In your mess? Yeah, there we go. Uh, trigger temperature. I don't see it. Whatever, it's around here somewhere. Maybe it's on the label. No, I'd have to look it up. Anyway, it's a it's probably like a 180 or a 190 trigger temperature, something like that. Um, but that way the fans will run automatically when needed, and when doing a cold start, you won't have the fans pulling on the battery as soon as you ignition on. <sighs> what else? What else? What else? Oh, the uh, the alternator. Um, in the last video, I resolved the alternator bracket issue. So the alternator had, I came up with the bracket solution, but one of the things it comes with is the wrong size heim joint at one end that is useless. That's the bolt that's holding the alternator in. Um, I have replaced this heim joint with one that is the correct size. That's this guy, which I had noted in the video and put a link for that from Speedway. Uh, it's the same exact thread as the one that comes with the adjustable rod, 
The only difference is the eyelet is smaller in the center. You probably see that. Um, that worked perfectly. So, uh, it, well, it worked exactly how I anticipated it would work, which is why I got a second one because I'm gonna use that same setup on that car. But, like I said, there's still a lot of wiring to do. If we take a look over here, um, I have not gotten into any of that mess yet. Under the dash still needs to be done. It looks like a nightmare, but I don't think it's actually gonna be a nightmare. There's just a lot of extra wire on this harness. So a lot of that will get cut off. Uh, you can see from what I did in the engine bay, that's all wire that I cut off right there. All drop to get everything to be nice and tidy and at the right length. So that's good. Well, and I got extra wire for whatever. Um, what else? Is there anything else exciting? I don't think there's anything else exciting. The brake master cylinder's hanging there. Don't get too excited. It was there to make sure that the wiring would go where I wanted to without doing anything. It's just finger tight on the nuts. So, um, yeah, we still got to do that. I did, because of where I ran the wiring behind the motor and where the pivot is, I did hook up the throttle linkage to make sure that that uh, does not create any issues there, and it does not. Uh, so that's still going to work out for us. But uh, I think that's really about it. There was something else. Oh, I was going to tell you about the cool, the cool stuff I found that has been extremely helpful. Uh, come around on this side. I'll show it over here where I can easily do it. Oh, okay. I know, in and out. It, just so you know, if you're wiring your engine bay and you can stand where I'm standing right now, it is much less stressful on your back to be able to work out from here versus standing right out here. That little bit of difference makes a huge difference. So keep your radiator out of the way until you actually are ready for it. But I digress, back to what I was saying. Uh, a couple of useful bits that I got that have made this job um, great for figuring stuff out without going permanent until I'm ready is one, these little guys. This right here is a magnetic zip tie holder. So you take this, you put it where you put a zip tie through it, put it where you want it, and say I wanted to shift this whole harness, I can grab it right here. And they hold pretty good, but I can move that one and then put that one right there and take a zip tie, which I'll show you what's great about this zip tie here in a second, but I can pop that zip tie in and there we go. Now that holds right where I put it. And I want to put it, you know, tuck it down lower. I can just move it down lower and that's where it'll live. Um, and they hold well enough that I actually think that uh, they should hold up just fine going down the road without ha having to do any permanent attachment. Um, I mean, they're, they're stout little connectors. So, and then the other thing about this that came in super handy is I went on and I found zip ties that are reusable with little release on them so that I can just back them right back off and move stuff and change things. So as I'm sorting out my wiring, figuring out where it wants to go, uh, realizing I have to add a wire in a run, um, I'm able to just, you know, I need to move this whole connector. I can drop bolts, that's what I can do. But I can, you know, unplug the connector, grab this and move the whole thing, which unfortunately I, uh, I ended up with one wire that had to jump from the A loom to the B loom and I didn't put a connector in right here so I don't have the flexibility to just take it all the way out like I originally had planned. Um, it's still doable, you just have to take another connection apart downstream a little bit further for that wire to come out. But you can, with these, I mean basically it's real easy to get your stuff organized and figured out without wasting zip ties, without screwing connectors in or uh, keepers. I have some of those around too. Um, 
anyway, the little hoop deals that you use self tappers with, um, those work great for managing stuff, but you can only put them in one time. Once you drill that in there, you've drilled a hole and you really don't want to move it. Otherwise you end up making a gazillion holes. So these have come in extremely handy to just be able to do temp layout, uh, figuring out where things are going to go, how it's going to mount, um, all, all that sort of good stuff. And I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm confident that, uh, they hold well enough that they'll stay there going down the road. Uh, so that's, uh, between the, the temporary zip ties and these little guys, which I bought a, you know, a whole big pack of, um, it has made working in and out and back and forwards through the harness, adding and removing things as needed, a, a much simpler process than it would have been otherwise. See, I mean, you can see they, they hold pretty good and that's just to the sheet metal. So uh, if I had a, a, a fish scale, I'd figure out what the, uh, the lift force on them is, but I, uh, I don't have a fish scale. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's the update on where we're at now. Uh, it's Labor Day weekend. It's Saturday afternoon. Uh, this evening, I have a family deal that we gotta go to a dinner. So I, it's gonna kill my evening worth of progress, but it's okay. It's for a birthday. So uh, happy birthday, Justin. Huh? You yeah, have two days until the weekend's over. Yeah, well, that's how I was getting there. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't interrupting me i can i know and you do but we'll just but, be ready for next weekend i don't know right about now i have no i'm blaming you if this isn't ready here, here, here. turn that turn that no, thing around turn no that thing around. no give me, no give me give me give me give me give me if this car is not on the road next weekend you know whose fault it is yours no it's not mine yeah because uh i gave up an entire day last weekend for you, for your car parts. You had fun. Did I? And then we gave up like four weekends in a row getting your car ready to go to King of the Open Road. Which was your idea. Yeah, okay. And that's uh, four weekends and a work day and there was, and it was a gazillion degrees last weekend. But you love me. Yeah. And you got so, me a car, so you should have known better. So, yeah, I don't know if this is going to make it out next weekend. It should. Uh, I'm not promising anything. There's still a lot to be done. Um, I mean, it looks like the top end of the motor's on there, but it's really just set in place for wiring purposes. Um, so much so. Hey, you know what? Um, hold on one second. Okay, so what I was saying is the top end was just put on just enough to do a, uh, to get the wiring sorted. And uh, I'll show you just, just how little there is here to, uh, to put this on. The distributor, ah! Oh, it's a finger. finger. Um, distributor is just blindly dropped in, not timed whatsoever. No hold down, no gasket. Just get that out of the way. The oil pressure sensor is just loosely spun into place. So that just spins right out. That, if I disconnect this plug right there, spin these two bolts out right here. This one's being a little tight. There we go. Yeah, finger tight. These were just finger tight to make sure the intake was in the right position. That's disconnected. There we go. That's this. This is where the real state of this build is at. Um, the top end's not sealed. These top covers don't have gaskets. Nothing has been aligned and timed that's yuck mm. Get out of that. it'll be fine for next weekend yeah so the the amount of work that needs to happen by next weekend is still tbd a, well it's still a good bit all right which means 
you have to let me get work done. Fine. Fine. Yeah. You have to let me get work done. Fine. But I let you have five hours today. That is it's clearly not enough. I need four weekends. You had four weekends. And you stole them all. You love me. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the update on the wiring. Like I said, when I, uh, the very first video where we started doing the wiring, I'm not. Well, it's still a little warm in the shop and the GoPro just reminded us that it was warm by uh, doing a little freak out and cutting me off. But what I was saying, uh, I'm not gonna waste a bunch of your time showing you wire by wire how to do this. The, uh, it is, it's a wiring a car and there's diagrams out there. You can find them. If you have questions about something that I did, feel free to ask. Um, it's boring. Down in the comments below. But yeah, this is just a lot of hours of getting it neat and organized and sorted out. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, expect another video in the very near future where we're a whole lot closer to being able to fire this thing up. And uh, I anticipate in the next video, we'll be able to at least power on electrically uh, so that we can test all the circuits and make sure that the wiring is good and that we don't let the smoke out of it. Um, but I've got to uh, move on to wiring under the dash. And if you've ever worked under a dash, you know that that's not fun. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put my thoughts together, get my mind in the right place, nice, happy, peaceful place, and then crawl under the dash and curse my life away. So we'll see you guys on the next one.